Hello there, Elizabeth Leamy here, host of Easy Money. In episode 22 of the podcast, we talked about how to save big money, 1200 bucks a year or more, by canceling cable, cutting the cord. But whenever I suggest this, people always ask, how will I watch sports? So now, in this video edition, my guest, Dennis Rostaro, talks to you about how to get any college or pro football game without cable. This is actually an audio only clip and I think it is well worth it. So today I'm going to be going over how one can watch the 2017 NFL season without having to pay an arm or a leg to a cable TV company or a satellite company. But before I get into that, I kind of wanted to bring up um what might be happening with some of the changes and the changes to the good when it comes to NFL broadcasts, because what the big complaint has always been um, the amount of commercials one has to watch during the game. And I remember back in March, the um, commissioner, Roger Goodell told his fans that he was going to uh, do his best to, you know, try to eliminate uh, double up commercials and what has been, uh, you know, uh, the Packers president, Mark Murphy, uh, recently said that there's not going to be any more uh, touchdown commercial kickoff than a commercial sequences, that they're going to get rid of that to try to eliminate some of the uh, the lull in games. Now, and I don't know how many of you out there are familiar, but it is ridiculous the amount of actual football that you watch in a, a three or four hour NFL broadcast. Um, now, the Wall Street Journal uh, a few years back had this famous uh, pie chart because they actually they they did some analysis to see how much football versus other things you're actually watching when you watch a football game. Um, and I'm, I'm going to break it all down here real quick before we get into actually how to watch NFL without cable, but because uh, I, I find it interesting. So the average football game, NFL football game, is three hours and twelve minutes. So it's 192 minutes. Of those 192 minutes, I think that's right. Yeah, three times six, one, eight. Yeah, 90, 192. Out of 192 minutes, you spend about 63 minutes watching commercials. So right off the bat, third. A third of the time is commercial watching, which is more than your typical average show because you figure, you know, uh, one hour of television uh, one hour television program is like 44 minutes. So it's like 15 or 16 minutes left. So it's really like 75% of a normal uh, viewing hour of TV is is what you want to watch where only fit, like, you know, a fourth of it is commercials. Here, a third is commercials. So again, out of a 192 minutes, 67 minutes are shots of just the players kind of standing around. That's literally what it is. It's just players standing around 67 minutes. Shots of the coach, crowd, cheerleaders, etc. So, you know, non-football players. Uh, 36 minutes. 36 minutes. Then you get 15 minutes of replays. I guess that's entertaining. You know, you get 15 minutes of replays sometimes. And so how much game action, actual football that you watch during 192 minutes? 11 minutes. Yes, 11 minutes. So out of a football game... You sit down to watch your football game. About 5.8% of it is actually football. The other 94.2% is other stuff. So just throwing that out there. And I'm, um, you know, maybe with, you know, the plan to get rid of the commercial double up after the kickoff, you know, they, they score a touchdown, there's a commercial, there's a kickoff, then there's a commercial, and then they play. Um, Getting rid of that, you know, you might actually get a couple more, you know, minutes of football action in there uh, and raise that percentage a bit. Maybe you might get, we might get like 7% of actual football. Who am I kidding? I mean, 7%, that's a lot. That's a lot of football to be asking for. Maybe we could probably just get that number up to 6, 6%. Um, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy that uh, we'll all sit there for over three hours and some change and uh, we 11 minutes of action. All right, so let's uh, get into how to actually watch the NFL this year uh, without having cable. You know, actually, now that I think about it, I'll also go into how to watch um, some college football because uh, it's, you know, not all that different. And um, if you're a fan of both, 
uh, you might, uh, you know, it, it might dictate which services you pick up. Okay, so all of your Sunday day games, um, you know, your local teams are going to air on Fox and CBS. Um, so if you you're going to need to get uh, find a way to get those two number uh, two networks, I'll get into you know the various ways how a little bit later on. First, I just wanted to give a high level summary of how you know to watch the various local and national games before I get into the details. Uh, your Sunday night football, which is a nationally televised game, that's always going to be on NBC. So right there, you got three big, the major networks that you're going to need to get if you're you know a big football fan here. Uh, Monday night football uh, is going to require ESPN. Meanwhile, your Thursday night games. They're going to air on a mix of NBC and CBS, but all of those games will also be simulcast on the NFL network. I know it sounds a little complicated. Don't worry. We won't need a slide rule or, you know, any complex mathematics. I'll just kind of get into, uh, you know, a laundry list of the best way to get all these uh, a little bit later. Um, so first, let's just cover the freest and simplest of solutions. Since you do need three major networks, you know, um, CBS, Fox, and NBC, and again, Fox and CBS will give you your local team games uh, on Sunday, more uh, the you know the afternoon games, or if you're out on the West Coast, what what time does football start there? Like what ten? I think yeah, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes, yeah, ten o'clock. Um, so those those first two games, that was those will be on CBS and Fox, and the NBC Sunday Night Football is obviously on NBC. So. Those three networks are free with an antenna. If you live near a city, it's pretty easy. I mean, you can just go, I mean, a lot of people can just go out and buy an indoor antenna, plug it in, and it works. I'll have a link in the show notes. Um, I've written a guide on how to choose the best antenna for you because it does change based on where you are in the country, how far you are from the TV towers, what the terrain is like in your area. And I mean, it's a whole bunch of variables that go into it. Um, I'll just put that link in the show notes. And also, I mean, if you just go back through some old episodes, Joel and I, have, we've covered, you know, TV antennas on a couple occasions. Um, you know, we did a one on TV full. I think one of the first episodes is actually about TV antennas um, and, you know, how easy it is to get, you know, your free network TV. Now, I mean, no, I know not everyone is going to want to deal with an antenna or maybe you're just not in an area, you know, in the vicinity of a tower to where you can get network TV. Don't worry, there's some other options uh, via streaming that I'm going to get into later. But honestly, you're for your football fans out there, if you can get a over-the-air antenna, uh, I mean, just any old antenna, it'll work just, all you need is a digital TV, and it'll work fine. Now, I know some out there are saying, digital TV, you say, I thought I needed a digital antenna. And I'll tell you, and I've said this before on the show, there's no such thing as a digital antenna. It's a marketing scheme. Um, the old antennas that like our parents had uh, when TVs were first invented, those will work actually uh, with the signals that are going on right now. What's really important is that the tuner that you have is a digital tuner. So any antenna will you send that signal to a tuner. Um, if the signal is digital, which it is because that's what they transmit from the tower, uh, your antenna will pick up that digital signal and send it to a digital tuner. The problem was the older TVs were analog TVs, and those wouldn't be able to pick up the signals. But now every TV that you buy in the store, um, I mean, at least since, you know, for the past 10 years, um, is going to have a digital tuner in it. So basically I'm saying don't worry about an antenna if it doesn't say that it's digital. Uh, it doesn't matter. Now, if you want to make sure that you get Monday Night Football, uh, which is on ESPN, and you want to make sure that you get every single one of the Thursday night games, you're going to want NFL Network. Now, some of those games also are simulcast on CBS and NBC, and I'll go over what weeks in a minute. But for right now, let's just talk about ESPN and NFL Network. Now, there's really two streaming services that will provide both of those. Um, NFL Network isn't on all of the other ones or the price is just too high for it to where it's not even worth mentioning. But the two packages that I'm, I'm going to discuss here for football fans are Sling TV and PlayStation View. Now, Sling TV will give you, in order to get 
both NFL Network and ESPN. You're going to need both the blue package and the orange package because NFL Network is on the blue package along with NBC, some NBC local affiliates can actually stream, so that'll solve some of the problem for people who don't want to deal with an antenna. You can actually get some local NBC channels through Sling TV, but only on the blue package. And also some Fox local affiliates are available through the Sling TV blue package. So that's some Fox affiliates, some NBC affiliates, and NFL Network. Those are all on the blue package. Now, to get ESPN, you're going to need the orange package because that's more like the Disney package and Disney owns ESPN. Now, ESPN by itself is, or rather the orange package by itself only costs $20 a month, but that doesn't give you NFL network. It doesn't give you Fox, some Fox local affiliates if you need them, if you don't have an antenna. It also doesn't give you the NBC local affiliates if you need them, if you don't have an antenna. All it does is give you ESPN. And that is for, you know, $20 a month. Now, the other package, the blue package, um, that gives you NFL Network. And it'll give you the following NBC affiliates here. I'm going to ramble, rattle them off real quick. You know, Chicago, New York, San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose area. I think that's KNTV. Uh, Los Angeles, that's KNBC. Um, New York, of course, is WNBC. Uh, Philadelphia, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, Washington, D.C., Miami and Fort Lauderdale, San Diego, Boston, and then Hartford, New Haven. Those are the NBC local affiliate channels that you can stream if you have the blue package. Now, the Fox channel you get through the blue packages are the local affiliates in Atlanta, Austin, Charlotte, North Carolina, Chicago, Dallas, Detroit, Gainesville, Florida, Houston, L.A., Minneapolis, New York, Orlando, Philadelphia, Phoenix, San Francisco, Tampa, Florida, and Washington, D.C. So that's the Fox affiliates that you get with the blue package. Now, if you get both the blue and the orange package, as I said, orange package is $20, blue package is $25. If you get both, they knock off 5 bucks, and it's $40 a month. So $40 a month will get you the NFL Network, and it'll get you all those NBC, Fox, local affiliates, and it'll get you ESPN for $40 a month. Now, Sling TV gets you, um, as part of their core package, now it's $5 more. It's $44.99. Um, it'll get you ESPN and the NFL Network, but it's 5 bucks more. Um, it'll give you all the Fox and NBC affiliates that I mentioned. Here's the bonus and what you get for five bucks, and it might be worth it for you. Um, you get a bunch of CBS local channels too, which also airs football. So um, those channels are uh, Atlanta, Austin, Baltimore, Boston, Charlotte, Chicago, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Columbus, Dallas, Denver, Detroit, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Harrisburg, Hartford. New Haven, Jacksonville, Kansas City, L.A., Miami, Minneapolis, New York, Philadelphia, Phoenix, Pittsburgh, Sacramento, Salt Lake City, San Diego, San Francisco, Seattle, St. Louis, and West Palm Beach. So if it's it might be worth it for you for those. I mean, if you're in one of those cities, an extra five dollars will pick up CBS. You don't have to worry about an antenna for NFL. Now, if you have an antenna, I'd probably go a sling and just you know grab ESPN unless you need the NFL Network, then grab both. Um, now, I'm going to get into why, how to watch out-of-market games in a minute. Uh, I'm actually going to get into how to watch pretty much any NFL game you want in a minute. Um, but before that, I wanted to kind of go over um, the Thursday night football debacle. I mean, it's not really a debacle. It's just it's kind of confusing on what it, why it airs. And why I say to get the NFL network is because it's just easy because you just know it's going to be on those, it's going to be on those, those channels. Um, it's going to be on the NFL network for Thursday night games. Basically they struck a deal um, with the NFL struck a deal with CBS and NBC. So they're going to be sharing weeks. So, and this isn't all the Thursday night games, I don't think, but basically CBS is going to have week four, five, six, seven, and eight. And NBC is going to have week 10, 11, 13, 14, 15. And the other Thursday night game is going to be 
exclusively on NFL Network. Uh, but NFL Network will also simulcast all of the games I mentioned on NBC and CBS. So what if you want to watch games that don't air in your local market? Or if you want to watch all the games? What if you want to watch all the games in the NFL? Well, there's a way to do this. Now, there's a service, and it's called um, NFL Game Pass. Now, what Game Pass does in the United States is air every single game from the 2017 and 28 season. Um, it also gives you a whole bunch of, like, you know, old games. Um, if you want to go back, there's like an archive of a whole bunch of old football games. And, and this is a service. You don't need cable for it. NFL Game Pass. It's available on iPad, iPhone, Android tablets, um, and Android phones. Xbox 360, Xbox One, Roku, Apple TV. And what you can do with it is stream any game you want. Problem is, is there's a blackout delay. And it's 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 quite so you can't watch any of these games live. Um game I mean what they basically do is for the regular season, you have to wait until 4 p.m. Eastern time. Um for those um you have to wait for those 4 p.m. Eastern time games to complete. Um, and then once that game's over, you'll be able to watch the 1 p.m. and the 4 p.m. games. So I guess the 4 o'clock game ends probably around 7.30. So at 7.30 p.m. when that game's wrapped up, you'll be able to watch the games that day. Now, I mean, if you're a diehard football fan and you just and you that might be okay for you, I know it's not really the ideal solution for me. So I'm going to explain something called Game Pass International. Because oddly enough, if you live outside the United States and um, your football, I mean, and the football isn't, tele like if the football isn't on locally, like say, in, I know in the UK, um, sometimes they air some um, NFL game. I mean, it's part of this, you know, push to get Brits you know, interested in American football. Um, but but there's a way, there, like, there's some countries that, like, I think France, they don't air any football. And they get to watch every single game live as it happens. So it's no, it's, there's no delay. So it's actually better, you know, if, if you're over in France and you want to use Game Pass because, you know, it's more expensive, but you get to watch all the games you want live. Now, I'm going to get into um, how you can actually use that service without moving to France in a moment. First, I want to go over... Um, just the different features that Game Pass will give you. Uh, real quick, it gives you um, the ability to, um, you know, turn your scores on and off to avoid spoilers if it's on delay. Um, so, you know, if you don't want, like, score updates, you don't have to see them. It gives you condensed game versions, uh, the, the condensed amount of 30 minutes long. So, actually, that kind of helps out for those people that, uh, you know, just want to watch uh, the 11 minutes of action. Uh, it looks like you know they cut a little bit. Of, they cut a lot out. I mean, they're uh, judging by the thirty minutes long. There's probably a little bit of looking at guys standing around and maybe a few coaches here or there. But um, you know, that's probably the best action to uh, actual football there is because uh, that's that's over thirty three percent, where everyone else watching it live is only getting about five percent football. So that's a pretty sweet deal. Um, <laughs> If you get full replay of every game from 20, 2009 until present day. You get coaches film, and it gives you DVR controls. So those are the, those are the things you get with Game Pass. Now, you're probably wondering, because I did bury the lead, how can you watch the games live through NFL Game Pass? And all you what you need to do is you need to get something called a, a smart DNS. Uh, or a VPN will work too. I prefer using a smart DNS. Um, cause it's just, you know, you set it and forget it. Um, I use a service, I've used the service called overplay before. And what it does is their smart DNS. All you do is you set it to their, um, domain name server and it routes your traffic through their domain server. And they basically make it look like your computer is in a given country. Now, what's cool about their smart DNS is they'll give you a whole list of services. So, you know, it'll uh, say like streaming services like Netflix, Game Pass, NHL TV, NMLB TV, a whole bunch of different services. And you can say, when I'm watching this service, I, I want it to look like I'm in this country. And when I'm watching, you know, this service, I want it to look like I'm in this country. Now, the service does run a couple bucks a month. Um, so, you know, it's not you know that big of a hit on your wallet. And it's really easy to set up. 
So what you'll do is to get it working, and I'll put an article in the show notes, pretty much everything I'm saying right now on this podcast is going to be attached to this article on how to watch NFL uh, online. And I'll actually, when I talk about college a little later, I'll actually put that article in there too. Um, so you can refer back to them and the instructions on how to do this are in there. So basically you just go up and you, you sign up for the DN, the smart DNS. That link's going to be in the article. Um, and there's actually links on the website on how easy to set it up. It's very easy. You really just go into settings and you, you know, type a couple numbers into your uh, DNS field. It's a lot easier than it sounds. Um, so when you're logged into Overplay, um, you basically just go into the smart DNS. You configure those settings. You will say when you're watching NFL Game Pass, you want it to be in France. Um, now your computer looks like it's in France. You navigate to NFL Game Pass. You start your free trial. Create an account. Make sure it's an international account. If you already have an NFL Game Pass in the States, do not use that account. Completely separate service, and it won't work. So you need a new account for the international service. It'll ask you for a payment method. Of course, don't f use your actual information there. Um, it shouldn't matter because it goes off of the... Um, geolocation of your IP address, which looks like it's in France. Now, there's a one-week free trial associated with this. So if you try it out, you don't like it, or you're having some trouble with the DNS, um, which, I mean, I haven't had any problems, but if you are, um, or you just don't like having to, to deal with the, this, the DNS, um, you can cancel um, as long as you do it before your week's up, because that's when you get billed. Now, since it's a live service, um, it costs 190 euro, um, which is about 210 bucks, which I think is a little bit less than the Sunday ticket um, or around the Sunday ticket. But I mean, that's what you're paying. You're paying for every single NFL game. So it's $210 for the entire season. Um, and, one, you know, so if... You, Maybe if you just want to check out a game or two on it to see how you like it, um, and then you can decide. Just make sure you cancel before the week's up um, if you want to get your money back. And it's super easy to cancel. You just do it from your account settings. So it's not like they hide it or or make it difficult. Now, I also want to say that um, while that's that's it's completely legal to use a smart DNS, um, so there's no trouble there, it likely violates the terms of service with NFL Game Pass. So if they ever decide to crack down on it, they could, you know, just turn off the service. And I don't think you'll be entitled to a refund. Um, so, I mean, there is a bit of a risk. Um, although it's worked the past few years and they haven't cracked down on that yet. Um, but who knows? I it all comes down to TV licensing deals and the archaic way that they write the licensing deals. Um, you know, really don't translate to how the internet actually works. Um, so these workarounds are really easy to pull off. And since these companies are still making money, um, they're kind of hesitant to shut them down. So uh, we'll see. But I just wanted to give you guys a heads up out there uh, just in case. Now, there's a couple other notes I wanted to go over um, before I get into how to watch college, which is a lot simpler. Um, first, if, you know, the games tend to be on CBS um, and you can't get an antenna, CBS All Access has over 150 local affiliates um, that stream uh, over CBS All Access. So basically, you pick up their service, and it gives you access to your local NBC affiliate, and which will air NFL games. If you live in certain buildings within certain cities, you might be able to actually get NFL Sunday ticket online without having to get uh, DirecTV. So, so basically, and I mean DirecTV, the satellite service, um, it'll... NFL Sunday Ticket Online um, is available to people living in select apartment buildings 
attending one of 10 universities, or living in a select area within the metros of New York, Philadelphia, or San Francisco. So it's very, very, you know, a select group of people that can watch NFL Sunday Ticket online. Um, and I think that has to do with they weren't these people these areas are now allowed to get sal- uh, to, to get uh, satellite dishes, so they needed to make something available for them. So they have NFL Sunday Ticket online. I'm hoping one day that they'll just open that up to everyone, but who knows? So what they're gonna have they're gonna be opening it they they opened it up last year actually to select multi dwelling unit buildings nationwide. Whatever that means. Basically, uh, if you go to this article, you can go to their website and enter your address, and or and it'll tell you, or your area, and it'll tell you um, where uh, whether it's available or not for you. It, for most people, it's not, and the blackout rules still apply. So you're going to need the antenna to catch games within your local market anyway, or you could just use the NFL Game Pass solution. Um, some Thursday night football games are actually going to be airing on Amazon Prime. Um, they're going to have on the Prime Video app. So basically, you know, you just if you're an Amazon Prime member uh, and you have your Prime Video app, wherever that'll work, you'll be able to watch the Thursday night football games on certain weeks. Those weeks are weeks four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Those weeks will air Thursday night football on. Amazon Prime. But really, the basic gist is get an antenna, pick your poison between Sling TV and PlayStation View, and off you go. You're watching football. And if you want to watch the out of market games or all the games, then, you know, pick up the Game Pass, use the Blackout Workaround, and you're good to go watching the NFL this season. Now, on to college, which is a lot easier. The majority of your NCAA college football is going to air on ESPN, one of the ESPN channels. So either ESPN, ESPN2, 3, ESPNU. Uh, Fox has a bunch of them. Uh, so it's going to be on FS1, FS2, or Fox. NBC, ABC, and CBS Sports Network air some college football. The Big Ten Network, the Pac-12 Network, the ACC Network, and the SEC Network. Those pretty much are going to have the big, um, that's going to be the majority of your big teams. Now, I mean, personally, I think Sling TV is probably the best for football in general because, like I said, it's it's a pretty decent deal um, on the NFL side of the house uh, when it comes to getting all the content you need. It also has the majority of college stations because um, when... Especially if you do like the double up, um, the double, like where you grab both the blue and the orange package, you're going to get access to ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN3, ESPNU, FS1, FS2, Big Ten Network, Pac-12 Network, ACC Network, and the SEC Network. And you'll also get NBC and Fox in certain areas. Um, oh, but to get all of those college, uh, channels, uh, especially like I think PAC 12 add on and sec add on, um, you're going to have to pick up something called the sports extra package. So it's, you know, it's an add on to, 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 to your, you know, prime, your primary subscriptions. So instead of the $40 a month for the blue and the orange, you add five more dollars to get the sports extra. And that'll give you all those networks. Um, and like I said, Sling also provides some local NBC and Fox. Um, and for another additional $5, you can get the broadcast extra, which will give you some access to some ABC uh, if you if you need it. Um, the only major college football channel missing from that you know package uh, would be the CBS Sports Network. Uh, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think they just air Army home games. Um, if you really need CBSN, uh, I think you can get that through football t- FUBU, FUBU TV, and I'll explain uh, I'll explain what they have to offer a little later. But that's pretty much, I mean, Sling TV gives you an option to getting all of those uh, big college football channels. Uh, and like I said, 
all together, it's 50 bucks for all that if you need the ABC. If you don't need ABC, then it's 45 to get you, you know, all of those uh, channels. Now, of course, you know, you can go to their site and you can mix and match if you only need to watch certain games. Or if you only, you know, need half of the channels for the, your teams that you like, then you can just, you know, pick up the orange or the blue. Um, I mean, that's one good thing about Sling TV is, while it's not truly a la carte, even though they kind of, I think that's their big push. It, it's pretty, it's better than any of the other services out there uh, when it comes to giving you options and choices. Now, I wanted to real quick go over some of the other services and what you can get on them. Um, the Hulu Live TV. I mean, I know most people know I think of Hulu is a pure streaming service for on-demand stuff, but now they actually have a live TV service. Um, I think we, we've covered that before on the podcast. Um, Hulu TV for forty dollars a month gets you ESPN, ESPN two, ESPN News, ESPN U, FS one, FS two, SEC Network, BTN, and CBS Sports Network. Um, the things that are missing is Pac twelve. You're not going to get the Pac twelve network. Um, Fubo TV. Um, I actually, I mean, I really like Fubo TV because they're they're pretty much they're a startup trying to just get into streaming. And they really just want to cater to cord cutters, and they're the only major streaming service that I know of that's a pure startup. All the other ones are pretty much spinoffs, or you know they have some type of you know big former traditional TV company behind them. So I mean, it's kind of cool to some you know to support something like that. It's pretty much homegrown, uh, cord cutter focused uh, streaming service. But they offer for thirty five dollars a month CBS Sports Network. FS1, FS2, and the B- and Big Ten Network. And they also provide access to local Fox, NBC, CBS in certain markets. Uh, DirecTV Now, their little, little package, which I know Joel isn't here, but, I mean, we would probably riff on that for a while. I mean, DirecTV Now, not very good at picking the names of their uh, packages. It's good service. But uh, I think the marketing department leads a little bit more of imagination. I mean, because right now I'm going to discuss dis- discuss uh, the live a little and the uh, just right. Ooh, oh, boy. All right. So the live a little package, um, that'll get you for 35 bucks. It'll get you ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN3, and FS1. If you want to add BTN and SEC Network, you're going to have to upgrade to just right, the just right package. And that's 50 bucks a month. If you want Fox Sports 2 or FS2, you got to go, you have to go all the way. You have to go big for their $60 a month package. Man, it's it's just really tough to talk about DirecTV now. Go big. Oh, Jesus. So, I mean, as you can see, just the way their packages are uh, kind of tiered, it can get quite expensive to watch college football on DirecTV now. PlayStation View will give you ESPN, ESPN2, FS1, and FS2. And I think you can watch ESPN3 using the Watch ESPN app. Um, And then you can just use your PlayStation View view login credentials. That Watch ESPN app, you can, uh, I think that actually works with View, PlayStation View, DirecTV Now, and Sling TV. Um, And that offers a lot of content on the Watch ESPN app. But that PlayStation View, uh, package is thirty nine ninety nine. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention that with that Watch ESPN app, I'm pretty sure that if you live in a Longhorn territory over down in Texas, that the Longhorn network will pop up on that Watch ESPN app. So if you have Sling TV, um, and or DirecTV Now, um, the Watch ESPN app will show the Longhorn network if you are in the Longhorn, if that would normally, if it's like in the market for the Longhorn network. Now, with the TV now, though, remember you have to get the just right package uh, to get the ESPN, where with Sling TV, you just have to buy the orange package to get the uh, Watch ESPN app. Now, before I get out of here, I want to actually talk about uh, the College Sports Live app. Now, that's an app that costs $9.99 a month. $9.99 a month. And they go out and make deals with schools to stream um, you know, their teams. So 
they they've struck some deals with uh, Air Force, Baylor, Georgetown, Georgia, Minnesota, Navy, Oakland, Ohio State, Penn State, Pittsburgh, Purdue, Rice, San Diego State, Yukon, Villanova, Virginia, and quite a few more. Um, again, I'll both the college sports article and the NFL article will be in the show notes. So if you go in, you'll be able to see a link to college sports live and see what they have to offer. It's a shot that if it's like a, you know, a, a medium sized school or, you know, even a big school, it just doesn't happen to be on one of those major, you know, uh, college sports networks that it might be available on college sports live. So you might want to go ahead and just, you know, give it a look. So that's how you watch football with cable. Dennis Restoro and his Grounded Reason podcast and blog also talk about how to watch baseball and any other sport without cable. If you want to cancel cable, we've got the eight steps to do it painlessly and beautifully on episode 22 of the Easy Money podcast. You can subscribe via the link below. Now that's easy money.